Am I live? Okay, I, I think I am live, but I might just wait for one or two people to join on here. If I look nervous, uh, I am. No, I'm not. It's actually just absolutely freezing here. Um, there's actually frost on the ground. Um, and so I'm hoping that my battery on my phone and computer won't won't die uh, from the cold. So I might just try to talk quickly and keep this going. Um, okay, it looks like we have a few people here. If you can just give me a wave in the chat just so I know that the connection is all right and you can hear me, um, that would be awesome. And then I'll just jump in. Chat, chat, connection okay? Awesome. Hey, Haiti. Hi, Patrick. Okay, well, hello. Uh, welcome to Earth Live Lessons. Um, we are having Earth Live Lessons all week, and uh, there will be more today. So after this, please do uh, stay tuned and subscribe so that you don't miss any. My name is Callie Broadus, and I'm a wildlife photographer based out of Washington, D.C., uh, but I'm actually currently, like so many others, at my parents' home. So I am in Warrington, Virginia, uh, which is a rural place about 45 minutes west of D.C., and I'm sitting in my backyard because it's the closest thing I could find to a rainforest to broadcast uh, broadcast live. Um, so uh, I am, uh, as I said, a wildlife photographer, but I also founded an organization called Reserva, the Youth Land Trust. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Um, and specifically about a, a, a specific site in Ecuador's Chocó rainforest, uh, actually a cloud forest site where... Uh, the group of youth that I've been working with, um, we are actually trying to create the world's first entirely youth-funded nature reserve in partnership with Rainforest Trust and our partner in country, Fundacion Eco Minga. Um, now, as I said, I'm a wildlife photographer, so I've been around the world and have photographed some of the wildest things from uh, being face-to-face -face with hyenas and snakes uh, in Africa to being in the remotest part of the Pacific Ocean in uh, the Marshall Islands. Uh, but Ecuador is one of my favorite places in the world. It is, uh, I think, the eighth most biodiverse country in the world. Um, and it has one of the most pristine uh, cloud forest sites in the Choco, which is one of the most threatened places in the world for biodiversity. So I keep saying cloud forest, um, not rainforest. And that is a very specific word. Um, so what is the difference? Well, a cloud forest is like a rainforest, except it's much higher. So the rain comes from clouds, of course. And uh, when you get into an, a mountain ecosystem, the clouds have to stop at a certain height. So the cloud forest is actually that, that elevation, which begins to ascend the mountain and even peak above the clouds. And the vegetation, the wildlife, um, the things that live on the slopes of those mountains, where the clouds actually uh, stay below and then throughout the day migrate as the heat in the air um, you know, warms up the water droplets, the clouds migrate up the mountain. And for, the, for most of the day and nearly all the way around the year, all of this ecosystem is just in the cloud. It's completely covered in fog. Um, so that's where I'm going to take you today, to a cloud forest in Ecuador. But first, I want to go over a little bit of what we need to bring. So I'm going to put on my trusty expedition hat. This hat has been with me everywhere, and I love it because it is waterproof. Um, so And that comes in especially in handy in Ecuador um, because there's a lot of water. So I, I don't think I can uh, share my screen. So instead, I printed out. I stole my parents' printer ink and printed out some photos for you. So this is where we're going. This is exactly where we're going. It is a cloud forest in Ecuador. And as you can see, the clouds uh, just go right over top of, of the trees. And we're shooting from above here with a drone. Um, and just a quick little map so you know where we are. This is Ecuador. Hopefully I'm not flipped uh, because the ocean is on the west coast. But this is Ecuador. And our site here is this yellow dot. Um, it's in the northwest corner of Ecuador, right on the border of a country called Colombia, which is also an incredibly biodiverse country, which also contains part of the Choco ecosystem. 
um, but we're right up there in Karchi province. So I brought my bag with me and I thought I would empty it and show you what some of the most important things are to bring on an expedition. Now, on expedition, we tend to stay in a tent. So this is one of the most important things that you can bring. Mine's a little busted, but uh, I have an ultra lightweight tent, which means this thing is about three pounds or two pounds. It's so lightweight that I just don't even feel it when I'm carrying it. And tents used to be really hard to set up. Now they're incredibly, incredibly quick and easy. Um, so I'll show you that tent right here. This is um, on expedition. We actually had a structure that we could pitch our tent in. And you see, we were kind of side by side with all the scientists and uh, our partners there in Ecuador. But that's our tent um, under this under this little makeshift structure so that we wouldn't get wet from above and below. And we'd also be protected from some of the more interesting creatures of, uh, of the Choco, including venomous snakes and of course, pumas um, and the other, other creatures that you might not want to run into in the wild. Um, now, one of the things I always bring on an expedition is a guide. This isn't exactly the, the guide I always bring, uh, but I forgot to mention that uh, actually, for the last seven years before launching this latest project, I used to design books at National Geographic Kids. And since we've all become backyard birders uh, in the last couple weeks, I would recommend getting a, getting a bird guide. You don't have to get this one, but I love it. And, um, and it's, it's just great to be able to identify the birds that you're seeing because we rarely see something like a puma or a spectacled bear. Those are really hard to find. You have to get really lucky, um, but there are always birds. So. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm set up here in my backyard because I caught a bear on my trail camera yesterday. And so I'm secretly hoping that we'll get a visitor behind me. So um, as I said, one of the most important things is to bring a drone because it's a really, really dense ecosystem. And sometimes it can be hard to get a sense of where you are. Um, and so I brought this little drone, which is the original uh, DJI Mavic Pro. and there are some newer versions, but that one does just fine. It has a little controller. Um, and I'll also show you my camera, which I actually have to grab here. Whoa. I keep this camera set up on a, uh, on a monopod. So it's kind of like a tripod, except it just has one long pole. And this lens is set up for birding. So... Uh, it's a 150 to 600 millimeter lens attached to a Canon 1DX Mark II body. I usually get questions about equipment. So there you are. And I actually hike like this. So I, I kind of put it around my neck and then I'm hands free. Um, and the only problem tends to be sometimes I will whack something with the end of this stick. But this is the best system I've worked out so far. And you'll also see I'm wearing all greens and kind of neutral colors. I don't like to stand out when I hike. Um, the only exception to that is when you're hiking somewhere where there's a hunting season, then you definitely want to stand out. But in the rainforest, typically I'm wearing a long collared shirt and long pants. And the most important piece of equipment, your rain boots, because you want to make sure that you have boots that don't have cracks in them. Uh, which is a mistake that I made on this most recent trip to, trip to Ecuador. Um, I borrowed some boots instead of bringing my own and wound up with a bucket full of water on my feet um, on our first hike. Now, some of the more specialized equipment that I have to bring to photograph things like, like this, really up close and with lots of detail here, especially at night when we go on our hikes, is called macro equipment. So. This is a specialty lens. It's called a, a 100 millimeter macro lens that allows you to get about this far from the thing you need to photograph. That came especially in handy on this trip. Um, so as I said, the Chocó rainforest is incredibly biodiverse. And um, in a second, I'm gonna take, tell you a little bit about a specific hike that we went on where we had to use this lens. It came in very handy. Um, and just very quickly, a few more things. 
I use a flash and a diffuser. And when it's really dark and I need something really powerful, I actually use a strobe system, which is a much larger light and it projects um, you know, much wider, gives you a lot more power. Sometimes I'm also taking video, so I have to bring monitoring equipment and a microphone. And then of course, loads and loads of extra batteries. So that's what's in my kit. Um, there's usually a lot more than that, but uh, that's what I've got at home today. So um, one last thing I want to talk about is who comes on this trip? Like who comes on these expeditions? Who gets to go? Now on Earth Live Lessons, you've probably heard from a lot of scientists um, and probably a lot of wildlife photographers as well. And those are two of the people that kind of get to come on these sorts of trips. Um, so for us, it was scientists like this team here who are, uh, they're actually dissecting rats, which they caught. And unfortunately on research expeditions, you do sometimes have to sacrifice uh, the specimens that you're studying, but this can actually go a really long way for conservation. Um, they were able to discover an entirely new species of rat on this trip which is really exciting because even though it might look sort of similar to others, when you get really close and identify their bone structure and uh, you know, specific little, little uh, details about their, um, about their anatomy, you might discover that you have a whole new species, which might mean that the specific piece of land that you're studying is really important for conservation. So that's what this team is doing. Um, we also had this guy, Mario Yanez, who, is a scientist at the uh, National Institute of Biodiversity in Quito, Ecuador. And uh, it's really important on these expeditions to team up with the different organizations that have the capacity to study, research, and publish new species. Mario has published dozens of new species of um, reptiles and amphibians. We also had a crew who would help us um, porting in uh, all of our stuff. So I carry this backpack, but I also had a 50 pound black case full of equipment and they were able to carry it in literally with the strap on their heads incredibly easily. And here they are setting up some of the camp. And then we of course had our expedition leader. Now this is my in-country partner, Javier, um, and our park guard, Danielle, who's also a reserve and youth council member. Um, they're really important parts of the expedition. And then the one last thing that I brought were my two friends, Lucy and Carter. Now you might have actually seen an Earth Live video uh, already with Lucy talking about sloths. Um, Lucy is also a youth council member, so is Carter, and they came as photo assistants on this expedition. And uh, that meant that they got to hold the strobes and the flashes uh, for long, long periods of time while we were photographing all the crazy critters we found. Um, so we were there because we wanted to uh, be the storytelling team to support all of these incredible scientists um, and these important researchers who were doing their work. Um, so many times these, these scientists are going into the field and making incredible discoveries and their work doesn't really get shared. I believe that a big part of conservation that's lacking right now is optimism. And I think that the more we understand how much there is left to discover, the more optimistic we'll be about our chances of success at conserving it. So we came on as the storytelling team to photograph these things. And I'm gonna tell you a little story about the first thing that um, our research partner, Javier, discovered on, uh, on this expedition. So it was the very first day that we got to see our site, the site that uh, Reserva, my team of youth who are scattered around the world are right now working to protect. Um, and we started this hike. It was incredibly wet. It was, it started raining the moment we stepped foot on the trail and it did not stop for six straight hours. And I ended up with a boot completely full of water, not even from the ground, but just from the rain coming in um, from above. It was an absolutely miserable hike, but Lucy was able to discover a potentially new species of insect. This is a sharpshooter leaf hopper, and it has this really crazy sort of horn structure on its back. 
Um, unfortunately, we didn't think it was new at the time. So we left it in place and it looks just like another species, but with um, some distinct differences. So that's for another expedition to go back. That was on the way up. And then we got up to the top and we found a bear den and puma den. And we found all sorts of evidence of amazing wildlife activity. Um, and it was just incredible to step foot on this actual piece of land that we're working so hard to protect. Um, and then on the way back down, our partner Javier stopped. And one of the things that we were doing as we were walking was trying to inspect every fallen branch uh, that had fallen from the canopy onto the ground because the canopy in this region has almost never been studied. So he's looking, Javier is looking at the branches and he stops and he looks at this. Now, I'm wondering if any of you can identify the new species of orchid that lives in this pile. Probably not because the flowers are about one millimeter wide. They're incredibly tiny. So we were able to take home a specimen and leave enough to keep living in that spot. Uh, but this is what the orchid looks like. But this whole thing is about a millimeter wide. So keep that in mind. Um, so that was our first experience on our site. Um, it was I thought the wettest that I would ever be, but I was wrong. Um, a few days later on our, uh, at, uh, the first midnight height of our expedition, we were out looking for frogs along the, along the river. And I started to slip and I was carrying this, this whole setup with the lights and everything. And I started to slip on a wet rock and I thought I'd stabilize myself rather than on another rock, just in a shallow puddle that was next to me. And when I stepped in it, it turned out to be a three and a half foot deep puddle that went all the way up to my waist and my entire camera, everything, my lens, everything was completely submerged in water. And that was the wettest that I got on that trip. Um, amazingly, those scientists had brought this, uh, this drying substance that called silica. And so I was able to put all of my equipment into a bag with all that silica and completely dry it out. Um, so it was able to survive to see another day. And in fact, see the next day, which was a huge relief. Um, so um, I know I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip forward. Um, I, I hope that you are slightly more interested in the Choco rainforest. It has some of the most incredible creatures you'll find anywhere. The plate, plate billed mountain toucan is one of the most beautiful birds I think I've seen. And um, it has a, a very distinct call that um, I hope you can take home with you and try uh, with your family. It goes like this. So try that at home. And then one more creature before I go. This is a bolito glosa. It is a lungless tree climbing salamander and that means that it breathes through its skin it's extremely long and very agile and uh this little guy actually has the fastest tongue in the animal kingdom so if you would like to help me uh protect those animals um and this protect this this little section of the world um that would be incredible there is uh only one percent of the world's forests are cloud forests so it's a very special place um, and, uh, I could use your help fundraising so you can donate, whether you have an allowance or a summer job, um, or you can hold a lemonade stand or ask for money for your birthday to protect this piece of land. Um, that, uh, that's really helpful. Every dollar protects 120 square feet of land, which, uh, means that about $3 protects a whole classroom sized area of rainforest. Um, and then we know that not everyone is going to be able to donate. And if you, if you do want to donate, that's fantastic. But, um, you know, perhaps you'd like to do more. So we are launching initiative, an initiative with National Geographic's campaign for nature called the 1 million letters campaign. And what we're asking is for you to write a letter. And this is your assignment, uh, for going, uh, after this lesson today, please go home, write, you're probably already at home write a letter saying what you love about nature and why we should protect it, why we should work to protect 
30% at least of our planet by 2030. We will take those letters and give them to world leaders at the UN, but we will also find someone who can match your letter with $3 to save this rainforest. So uh, I'd love to take a question or two. So if you have a question about expedition or about how buying land in the rainforest actually works, feel free to drop it. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll just close by saying, please send your letter in. Um, you can send it to P.O. Box uh, 527277. I'll um, leave it in the comments. Uh, Washington, D.C. 20037. Um, you can also find us online at reservayLt.org. Um, or on social at Reserva YLT for the Youth Land Trust. Um, you can also find me at Callie Broadus. And um, I'd just like to say thank you so much to Lizzie for giving us your YouTube uh, and the chance to connect with your followers and um, everyone who is sitting at home and wishing that we can all be out on expedition today uh, as well. So um, if there are any questions, Go ahead and type them in there. But otherwise, I know there is another Earth Live lesson coming up. So please do make sure you tune in. And again, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the upcoming live lessons. Um, all right. Well, I'm going to end the stream. Feel free to reach out to me. And um, again, join our Million Letters campaign. Write your letter. Draw a picture. Add doodles. Stick it in the mail. P.O. Box 57277, Washington, D.C. And I really look forward to reading what you're saying and, and uh, helping you preserve a little piece of rainforest today. Thanks.